Hey there everyone, welcome to another one of my album reviews. My name is Christian Eschbach, and today we are going to be taking a look at Jason Newstead's very first solo album, Simply Heavy Metal Music. That's it. That is accurately what is on this album, so he titled it very accurately. Um, I want to discuss all the negatives about this album first before I get into the individual songs. I was really kind of hoping for something. Newstead always said that most of his bass riffs got rejected in Metallica because they sounded too Black Sabbath-ish. I was really hoping, especially after he'd worked with Ozzy and that, that I was going to get a really kind of Black Sabbath-y sounding album. I really was. And then when you factor Voivod in there, I was hoping maybe some artsy experimental stuff going in there and a few other things. There, there was things I was kind of really hoping to hear, and they didn't show up the way I had hoped. Um, this album suffers from two... What I see it as is two kind of major issues. The first one is I like Jason Newstead as a secondary or backup vocalist. I like when he shares vocals or is trading off on vocals or if he's backing someone up on it, especially within Metallica. You know, when he used to back up Hatfield, it sounded great. A whole album of new said singing. Yeah. The other thing too is they've got two guitarists on this album. And most of the time I find the leads or where the solos are. Uh, I'm not overly impressed. Not to say that they're bad. The guitar work on this album is great when you're getting in the rhythms, the main riffs, stuff like that. It's not bad at all. But the leads are hit and miss, I find, from my personal taste. All right, so those are my biggest complaints about this album. Uh, the drumming by Jesus Mendez Jr. It's fantastic. Of course, I'm going to like the bass, which is all Jason Newstead. And then you got uh, Mike Mushock and Jesse Farnsworth on the guitars. Both of them do good jobs. I just... When you're used to listening to Newstead playing along with Hetfield and Hammett or, you know, various other people, th this kind of Something's missing. Something wasn't quite right. Uh, the album opens up with Heroic Dose. Great way to start off the album. Fires it up. Gets it going really good. Um, outside of being a great way to start up the album, it's not It's not a bad song, but it's not a standout. Like there's, there's only two songs on this album that to me in any way are real kind of singly standout out songs. The rest of them are good album cuts, you know, um, or not necessarily, but you, I'll get into that. Okay, so Heroic Dose is a good album cut. It opens up the album well, gets things going well, you know. From there, we go to Soldier Head. Soldier Head reminds me very much of Metallica. It has, it, it, it opens up with kind of a, disposable heroes kind of vibe and then quickly kind of goes into a whiplash essence. So it's really cool, but it kind of feels like Metallica was pilfering from, or I mean, not Metallica, sorry. It kind of feels like Newstead was pilfering from Metallica a little bit. Um, or homaging even if you want, but to me it was a little pilfery. Um, it's a good tune though. It is a good tune. It's just... Anyways, uh, after that, we go on to As the Crow Flies. This is the first song on the album that I still enjoy listening to. It actually goes into my regular mixes. I'm a big fan of the song As the Crow Flies. Good tune. Really good tune. 
Uh, I, I think it's got a catchy chorus that you can sing along with a little bit. It's heavy, but it's not fast, you know. It's kind of... If you're into the heavy side of 90s music, you know, that really heavy Alice in Chainsy stuff or the really heavy Soundgarden stuff, or, you know, Metallica, obviously, you know, but you get not, not Black Album, more Load Reload. But not quite even there, because it, it doesn't sound like it. It's just got that heavy kind of vibe to it. But, yeah, so um, the heavy on that song is great. Really, really good. But it's not fast. It's not brash. It's not brutal. It, it's good heavy. Uh, that time, after that, we go into Ant Possible. All right, tune. You know, one way. You know, whatever. Um, it, 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 uh, I think I enjoy it when I'm listening to the album, but I really, you know. Long Time Dead. That's pretty cool. I like Long Time Dead. Uh, Long Time Dead's got a kind of different feel to it. Definitely, this is where I can hear a Sabbath-y kind of influence, but it's not... Not the type of Sabbath you necessarily are expecting, you know. To me, it doesn't sound... It sounds more Dio Sabbath, less Ozzy Sabbath, almost, kind of. Yeah. Above all, not a bad tune, fills out the album half decently. I like that next tune, though, King of the Underdogs. This one's got a kind of cool little grab at you. The chorus, you know, King, King of the Underdogs, you yeah. It works, you know. It's a little bit simple, but it really works. It's cool. Uh, Nocturnus is another very Sabbathy-esque kind of tune to me. Uh, I really dig it. It's the lyrically. Well, there's no lyrics that 100% stand out on this album. The lyrics while you're listening to this song, they're pretty decent. You know, I had it on uh, right before I did this review. I was listening to it on my uh, headphones while I was out in the garden. And it was, it was, you know, it's a really good tune to actually, you know, listen to. After that, we get into the only other song on this album that to me really pops and stands out, which is Twisted Tale of the Comet. Now, as the crow flies is big and thick and heavy, Twisted Tale of the Comet is fast and ripply, you know. Um, it, it's still heavy, you know, like it's still got that meat and bones kind of vibe to it. But I like the just the whole essence of this song and the whole lyric. This is another one where I really do enjoy the lyrics to it and, and the tale that he's telling. You know, even that he's telling you that he's telling a tale. You know, it, it's really it's it's a really good tune, and I really kind of wish this was actually possibly the last song on the album. And if it wasn't this one, I, I wish it would have been King of the Underdogs. The last two songs on this album, uh, you got Kind of Illusion and Future, uh, Future Reality. And both songs, they're good, but very cliche, very typical. There's nothing special about them to me. I think that with a little work, they could have been better. One thing I'm going to talk about with this album, just to help finish off everything at the end here, is the album was produced by Jason Newstead. And this is Newstead 100% making the songs and the album that he wanted to make. And total props, total respect for that. This was his vision, and I hope it came out exactly as he wanted. I myself, if I had been the one producing this... I definitely would have shortened up a lot of the soloy midsections on a lot of the songs. Uh, I think they ran a little bit long. Uh, just because, like I mentioned, I wasn't overly impressed with all the solos. There were a couple songs where 
basically the ones where I really enjoy the solos, where I really thought the guitars really kind of popped or really did some real work. Um, was as the crow flies, twisted tail of the comet, king of the underdogs was another one. Outside of those, I found that the guitars kind of they were good, but they just didn't pop, or not the way I would hope they would pop. And I think if some of the songs were compressed and condensed down a little bit, it might have helped. Um. This is an example, to me this album is an example of sometimes an artist needs a producer to kind of reel them in a little bit. To tighten it up, to give it a better quality sound per se. Not not quality sound, sorry, I like the sound quality on this. A better quality, pro, a more commercial product, let's go with that. I think if if a uh, actual producer had been there with Newstead, it would have been a much more commercially viable product than it was. I feel that some of the commercial viability of this product definitely is lacking because it was Jason 100% only seeing it his way, which that's, that's, that's cool. There, once again, that is awesome. I get that. I, I've produced enough stuff on my own. That I get producing within a group. I get producing my own personal stuff. And the whole way around, if you like heavy metal, it's a good album. If you like Jason Newstead, it's a cool album. If you are interested in what Jason Newstead has done after Metallica, it's a cool album. I would... Definitely pick up another Newstead solo album as a fan. You know, I'd pick it up just for that reason. But I would pick up another one hoping that he learns from this one a little bit. I'm the one thing I was really kind of bummed out listening to this is, you know, Newstead spent some time in Voivod, you know, so you had some real artsy kind of stuff there. You know, we're talking about the heavy metal answer to Pink Floyd. And it doesn't feel like he picked up that part of it at all. You know, it was, it's kind of interesting the way that this worked out. Anyways, uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. You know, that's cool. Otherwise, uh, subscribe. That way you get notifications. Please share the video. Help me get out there. That way, you know, get a little more people watching. Otherwise, peace, love, and take care.